looking out my window, sun shining bright. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Reese the Sideliner, and tonight we have the end season tournament, uh, knockout rounds, so to speak, kicking off for the very first time, and. I couldn't be more excited, bro, especially with the teams and the matchups that are taking place. We got the Celtics versus the Pacers, the Pelicans versus the Kings, and then tomorrow, it's the Knicks versus the Bucks, and then the Lakers taking on the Suns, bro. This should be very, very interesting, very intriguing, very fun, bro, and I'm here for it, bro. But before we get into any of that, bro, if you're new around here, go ahead and subscribe, my boy. This is an NBA center channel. We do our gaming stuff and things like that, but, you know, we talk basketball around here, so if you into that, go ahead and subscribe to Reach the Sideliner. Uh, like the content if you, you know, like the content. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, whoa, whoa, but before that, um, I do have to keep promoting um, my show that I am about to uh, pr premiere. Um, I wanna say the date will be January 6th, Jan um, January 6th, 2024. So uh, about a month from now, We'll be starting a podcast, I guess you could call it. Um, it's, it's titled The Sideline Perspective. It's a very original name based off of obviously my name. But yeah, man, um, I'm very excited for that. So just stick around and it's only up from here, bro. Getting into the games though. Like I said, tonight we have the Indiana Pacers who are the two seed in this tournament taking on the three seed of Boston Celtics. Then uh, later on tonight, over in the West, we have the two-seeded Sacramento Kings taking on the three-seeded New Orleans Pelicans. But getting into the uh, Indiana Pacers versus Boston, um, the Pacers are the best offense in the league right now, bro. Uh, putting up a league best, almost 129 points per game while also averaging just over 30 assists per game, which um, would also be number one across the league. So they are like quite literally the best offense if you um, equate their scoring and assist numbers. Um, but on the flip side of that, they are like the worst, one of the worst defensive teams in the entire league, bro. Uh, they allow their opponents to score uh, about 126 points per game, and they are second to last in team rebounding with just 39 uh, rebounds per game. So um, their very, very good offensive season is being overshadowed by them being so terrible on the defensive end. They can't really get a stop. And um, um, like on average, they win games by just about like three points. That's, you know, that's a one possession game every night. So yeah, that's exciting basketball. Um, you don't know who's gonna win from an, on a night to night basis, but for a team that's that has so much potential and um, these young guys like Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Mathurin, who's a rising star, um, Andrew Nimhar is looking good. Like um, you would expect them to be able to win more convincingly than just a one possession game on average. But they're on the defensive end, they really have a lot to be desired. Um, Miles Turner can't do it all. He's not even having the best defensive season that he's uh, over his past like three seasons. It's probably like his worst defensive season. As far as that goes, bro, they are still um, in the playoff hunt, so to speak. They're six, currently ranked six in the East right now. So um, they are staying afloat and above water. And um, they're actually one of the four undefeated teams heading into this knockout round. So they handled business throughout the month of November and they had a point differential of plus 39. So they really, really handled business throughout that uh, in season tournament. And as I mentioned, this is indeed the number one scoring offense in all of basketball. And they've had like some crazy high scoring games uh, already this year. They started off the season with a bang, 143 points scored, although that was against the Washington Wizards. Um, at that point, people still expected the Wizards to be a competitive basketball team, so that was an impressive win. A um, couple weeks later, they put up 152 against San Antonio. Like I said, that was early on, so it was you know people were still high on San Antonio as well, but impressive nonetheless. Um, 134 against Utah um, a couple days later, and a week from a week or two ago, they put up 157 points against the Atlanta Hawks. So. They can put the ball. That was in regulation. They put all that was all those games were regulation games. They can obviously put the ball into the basket and they can get hot on any given night, but on defense, that's that's just where they're really lacking, bro. They had back to back games against Miami where they put up 130 points in both games. Tyrese didn't play in one of them. So they can put up the points even without Tyrese Halliburton. But like I'm I keep 
you know, reiterating their defense is just not there. And against a team like the Boston Celtics, who are top 10, damn near across the board, whose worst statistical category team-wise is assisting, I don't know, it's going to be a tough one. Getting into the Celtics, um, like I said, they're bottom five in the league in assists per night, just 25 a game. But defense and rebounding, they're amongst the top four in the league, bro. 47 rebounds a game, which would give them third in the league. And they also allowed a, the fourth least amount of points a game at 107 points for their opponents. But they also put up 10 more points a night, 117 of their own. That gives them an average margin of victory of 9.4 points per game. That leads the league right now. Um, the only team that's really close to them is Oklahoma City Thunder at like 8.2. But... With that being said, they had just the one loss during tournament play, falling short to the Orlando Magic, who at the time were on a eight. They were on a. They finished off with an eight-game win streak. I think maybe even nine. But um, they easily could have, you know, taken the place of the Boston Celtics had they um, had the <laughs> Magic won one more game. They were also three and one in tournament play. And the Celtics had edged them out by just five points. So the Celtics couldn't even uh, had a, there was a chance that they wouldn't even be here right now had they not beat the Orlando Magic. So that was a much, much needed win for them. Um, especially if the point differential was close. If you beat that team during the tournament, I think you get the nod for uh, that placement. So um, yeah, kudos to the Boston Celtics for that. They, like the Indiana Pacers, have also had some really high scoring games and some decent wins. And funny enough, their highest scoring game of the season thus far came against this team, 155 to 104. Um, I want to say Tyrese Halliburton did not play in that game. I didn't double check it. That's on me. Um, but yeah, they put up 155 points. Like, no, I think he did. They put up 155, bro. They had numerous, numerous games where they eclipsed uh, 120 as well, not to mention three games where they held opponents to less than 100 points. That's impressive as hell in 2023, holding teams to less than 100 points. That's that top four defense standing out. And if I had to give my prediction as to who's gonna win this game, it's the Boston Celtics, bro. Although they aren't um, a really high scoring team, 117 points a night is still a lot. And not to mention, <laughs> the Indiana Pacers are the bottom team in the league when it comes to defensive uh, points given up a game. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to get this one to Boston. We're going to get through these a little bit faster, bro. We got to touch on three more games, six more teams. Sacramento versus New Orleans. The Kings have really been hanging in there amidst all the movement in the West. Uh, teams like OKC and Minnesota just getting organically better. Um, their position at the fourth seed right now, they're proving that last year was not a fluke. And, you know, they are really like that. A top 10 ranked offense at the moment, putting up 116 points a game. Um, Placing them in the upper echelon of the elite offenses of the NBA right now. They also dish out 27 assists a game as a team, seventh across the league. The defense, like I said, with the Indiana Pacers, uh, they have much to desire, man. They give up 0.2 points more than they can score on an average, placing them in the bottom 10 of the offense. So they have a top 10, I mean, bottom 10 defense. So they have a top 10 offense, but a bottom 10 defense. Um, that's 500 basketball, if you ask me. But uh, they're also middle of the pack when it comes to rebounding or, you know, bottom tier rebounding team as well. So uh, the fact that they can't close out possessions, um, not just allowing teams to score, but off second chance points, closing out possessions with rebounds, uh, that does, you know, leave a lot of questions. But they did, however, go without a loss during this in season tournament. So 4 0 heading into tonight's game with a point differential of 30. In my opinion, they gave us a candidate for game of the year, that last game of the season tournament, in season tournament that they had against Golden State, bro. They didn't even have to win that game, but they did. And they proved that, you know, they're they're not just going to lay down and roll over throughout this season. They're a really legit team off the bench. So Malik Monk is doing his thing, bro. Uh, De'Aaron Fox came back on fire, bro. So I really, really like what they've been doing over the past 10 or so games. They've They've also been able to put up 130 plus points game per games uh, while keeping opponents, you know, to low scoring games. But they've also had a few games where they couldn't even uh, hit 97 points. So, uh, like I said, this is a very, very promising team. But the defensive end, just like the Indiana Pacers, leaves a lot of questions. Uh, the one of the games that they had this season, um, 
was against the New Orleans Pelicans, where Zion and Brandon Ingram combined for 57 points and De'Aaron Fox and just the team as a whole struggled to shoot from the floor. And they took a really big loss in that game. But switching over to the Pelicans, they are <laughs> the epitome of a middle of the pack team when you look at their um, team, sta uh, team stats as a whole. 15, be 15 best in scoring with 114 a night. They're the 12th best rebounding team where they grab just over 44 rebounds. They average 26 assists per game, giving them the 13th uh, best in that respective category. And that a 16th ranked defense, allowing just 0.8 points less than what they score. So um, just like a lot of teams that we just spoke about, this is a team that doesn't really have um, a defense to hold them up uh, on the off to help support their offense. Um, 114 points a game, that's a really, really solid uh, scoring output a night, especially given uh, if, you, if you consider that's the 15th ranked in the uh, in the entire association. But when you're you're giving up less than a point than what you're actually scoring, that's a dog fight every night, bro. And with guys like Brandon Ingram, uh, Zion Williamson, and even CJ McCollum, I mean Herb Jones, Jose Alvarado, like, I can go down the list. They just have injury after injury, and you don't. That's not a team that. I mean, that's not a recipe for a championship team, but we're we're getting a little bit off of uh, track. This is just regarding the end season tournament game tonight. Um, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, their best win came against the Sacramento Kings where they won by 36. They won by 36 and the Kings didn't even put up 100. So, uh, you know, there's just a big discrepancy from that game that they played earlier this season and what the Kings have been doing as of late, but I just, I gotta get I gotta give it to the Pelicans, bro. If I had to, because they can beat teams like Philly, but then lose back to back games to Utah or fall short to the you know Chicago Bulls. And then the Sacramento Kings, you know, they've looked decent over the last ten games or so, like I just said, but they, you know, they struggle to put up hundred points some nights. So. I got to give it to the somebody, I'll give it to the Pelicans. And moving on to tomorrow's games. Like I said, we got LA versus Phoenix, New York versus uh, Milwaukee, and um, the Bucks are a team that many of us had leading the Eastern Conference this season, you know, with the acquisition of Damian Lillard over the summer. And uh, it's been disappointing, you know, by comparison of what we projected and just, you know, just from last season, obviously the biggest difference of this team, the identity of this team is the defense. They went from the fourth best defense last year, giving up just 112 points a game to giving up 118 points a game this year. That's not really a, a huge jump. That's just three extra shots, a couple extra shots, but that places them in the bottom seven across the league, bro. They only score 121. That is the third best in the league, but you know, a five point difference, like I said, that can go, that's down to the wire every game. So they give us, you know, a lot of these teams, it's mad dusty in here, bro. I'm not even going to cap to you. I'm going I'm to I'm fix that. A lot of these teams um, giving us good basketball as far as, you know, who's going to win on any given night. But in a win or go home situation like this, bro, you really have to hang your hat on the defensive end, bro. Especially with a team that you know can produce offensively like the Bucks, who are third. Um but they don't, you know, capitalize on ball movement or, you know, closing out possessions with rebounds, 20th in rebounds, 24th in assists. Uh, this could be definitely talked up to personnel change, whether it's a new coach, um, key pieces being moved. It's just still very alarming for guys like Damon Giannis to be struggling like this, even though it's early on. They had a game earlier this season where they beat the Detroit Pistons by just two points. And the Detroit Pistons look like a group of ragtag YMCA basketball players. Uh, Marcus Sasser dropped 26, 6, and 6 on 65 ish percent shooting for the night. And Giannis ended with 15 points. So, I mean, it's, they even allowed the Wizards to put up 130 points twice this season. Granted, they won both of those games, but the Wizards put up 130 twice. Zach Levine and uh, DeMar DeRozan missed the game the other night. They beat the Bucks, So this is a beatable team, bro. But, you know, they just don't have the same identity that they had last year on the defensive end. So it, it, it could get scary for them. It really could in this in-season tournament when it's a winner-go-home game. Giannis having an off night. Dame having an off night. We've seen it happen. 
We've seen it happen. So uh, the Knicks, they've been atrocious offensively all year long, though. So, um, you know, who knows? A bad defensive team versus a bad offensive team, anything can happen. But the Knicks are top four. They're the fourth best uh, defense in the league, bro. They close out possessions, 46 and a half rebounds a night, and they hold their opponents to just 105 points a game. They're nearly dead last at assists at 28. They don't really have ball movement over there. You know, they're, the, they're just the 24th ranked offense. So like I said, they've been pretty much abysmal off offensively. They've had numerous games where they haven't been able to score 90 points, bro. So it's, it's really, really up in the air with this one. When I say they've had numerous games, I mean like two and three games where they didn't put up 90 points, bro. That's just unacceptable in 2023 when you consider the pace, the space, the three-point shooting. Um, that's what the league was looking like two decades ago, bro. I thought we was past that, but no, this this uh, this New York Knicks team just doesn't understand that, I guess. But, you know, they do have games where it's thrillers, bro. Like that game against the uh, Phoenix Suns not too long ago where uh, Devin Booker had to hit the game winner. That was a really good game. I don't know, though, bro. I don't know. I'm not confident in either of these teams, bro. The Bucks score a lot of points, but they can't defend anything. The Knicks don't score anything, but, you know, they don't allow much scoring. But, you know, if I had to give it to somewhere, I'm going to give it to the team that actually scores the ball, and that's the Milwaukee Bucks coming out on top of this in-season tournament game. And last but not least, the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Phoenix Suns. The Lakers have been by far, head and shoulders, above water, the best performing team in these tournament games, bro. They finished with a, um, an undefeated record one and a, a point differential of a plus 74. The next closest team with the highest point differential was the Bucks with a 46. They damn near doubled every point differential in the league. So um, they really get up to play these games. <laughs> with that being said, though, their season stats are definitely worrisome, especially against a team like the Phoenix Suns, who have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, two superstars of that magnitude who can just absolutely torch you on any given night. Um, they're amongst the worst offensive teams in the league, uh, scoring-wise, just 112 a night, giving them the 20th ranking. Um, but they can move the ball with the best of them, and they're currently uh, top 10 in that regard, 26 assists a night. Uh, they're literally in the middle of the pack when it comes to closing out rebounds, 44th a game, 44 a game, excuse me. And um, they allow more points than they score themselves, bro. That's uh, that's saying something, man. Like I said, for the Indiana Pacers, that sounds like 500 basketball to me, bro. Or was it the Kings? I don't know. That sounds like 500 basketball to me, though. You give up more points than you score, albeit it's just one single point. <sighs> that's not championship caliber right there. It is early on, you know, LeBron James is about to be 39 in about, you know, 25 days, but I'm very torn on how to judge them. I want to have, you know, moving forward throughout this tournament, especially, like I said, with the Phoenix Suns, who are a very, very unpredictable team with uh, the stars that they have. As you can probably already tell, if you watch the Los Angeles Lakers, this team is very unpredictable, but in the worst ways. <laughs> they'll have games where they lose by over 30 to a young Houston Rockets team. Or they'll barely, they'll barely, just barely beat a uh, Portland Trailblazers team, bro, who are a guaranteed lottery team coming this offseason. But they've beaten the Suns twice already this year. Like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, one of those teams was, one of those games was in the uh, tournament, though. Um, they're just a hard team to gauge at this point, man. Then the last team, Phoenix Suns. They finished the first four games of the tournament with a 3-1 and one record. Like I said, they lost to the Lakers. That was our only loss. And they ended with the second highest point differential out west but seeing how they were in that group with the Lakers, uh, and they did lose, the Lakers were undefeated, they um, they had to get that wild card selection because of the fact that you don't win your group, you're not, you know, you don't advance. But that wild card is the point differential record and all of that, that's how you get into that. This is yet another team that teeters the middle of the league averages, you know, 11th in points per game with 116 a night, but they're 17th on defense where they give up over 113 a night. Um, they're coincidentally right ahead of the Lakers at 14th with rebounding just over 44. And they they dish out 26 assists per game, giving them 13. So like almost like the, similar to the New Orleans Pelicans, epitome of mid. Well, not really mid, but like middle of the pack. Uh, obviously this is a team that has yet to be at full health. Bradley Bill has played one or two games. Kevin Durant is off every other night. Devin Booker has missed his stretch of games. 
Uh, but they have had some really impressive wins to start the season nonetheless. Um, they started off pretty slow, especially, you know, dropping back-to-back -back games to the San Antonio Spurs, who haven't, you know, won just but one, maybe even two games since winning those games against Phoenix. But they've had games where they knocked off the number one team in the entire league in the Minnesota Timberwolves, um, where they clamped down on Ant-Man. KD and Book both went for 31. They won that game 133 to 115. So they've had really decent outputs against, you know, solid teams. But like I said about the Lakers, I'm just really torn because the Lakers have stamped themselves as a dangerous team throughout this, you know, tournament. But they're questionable any given night, especially with Anthony Davis, every other Davis. And then at least with Phoenix, you know they're gonna compete and make it, you know, a competitive game, but you know, you don't know if Devin Booker's gonna play. You don't know if Kevin Durant's gonna play. You don't know if Yusuf Nurkic is gonna have a good game. You don't know if Eric Gordon's gonna be shooting well. So it's just a lot of things that factor into this, but if I had to give it to a team, it's gotta be the Lakers, bro. They've looked absolutely unstoppable during in-season tournament play. And I'm pretty sure LeBron wants to be that guy to win the first one. Ah, <sighs> a lot of rambling, a lot of spewing, but uh, I'm gonna end it there, bro. Like I said, if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel, man. Or if you you know you're returning and you you know you don't you're not sure if you want to join the the community the family or whatever, go ahead and subscribe, bro. We got a lot of new stuff coming to the channel real real soon, and I'm just excited for the future, bro. Like the video, subscribe, comment, uh, tune into the games tonight. I'll be back tomorrow to you know recap them, and uh, yeah, we gonna go from there. I'll catch y'all. Peace.